Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cisco's Virtual Kitchen. My name is Lisa Evangelos with the Culinary Federation, and I have two uh, co-hosts with me today from the Cisco side. We have Jay Ashton and we have Cameron Tate, special guest today. Just uh, welcoming everybody to our episode of Chefs in the Fields. If you were with us in January for our episode, you were there for the exciting announcement and launch of a new partnership that the Culinary Federation has with the Nordic Embassy. And part of that announcement was we were going to be having a special five-part mini-series to feature guests, chefs, and culinary partners uh, from those five countries, which are Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, and Iceland. And so the Culinary Federation, I always like to say, is so much more than a professional association. We are the Federation family, and at the heart of what we do is fostering relationships uh, in the culinary community. And so just before I introduce our special guests all the way from Iceland today, we're going to run a quick little clip all about the Culinary Federation. So here it is. The Culinary Federation is so much more than a professional association. It's friendship, it's fun, and it's family. Come find where you fit in. Join the Culinary Federation family today. Awesome. And so usually we stick within our own country <laughs> for fostering those relationships, but we're building the family out of our own country, out of our own continent today. And we are stretching all the way over to Iceland. We're super excited to have some special guests with us today uh, for this episode of our mini series, all about Arctic char. And so I have got two special guests that I'm going to introduce to you, Chef Henrik and Arnie. And uh, first of all, we'd love just to hear a little bit about you, Chef Henrik, if you want to give us a quick intro to you. Yes. First Welcome. of all, thanks for having us on the show. Uh, my name is uh, Hendrik Lauerson and I'm a chef in Iceland. Um, I'm a chef and owner of a gourmet store and uh, a concept that we're doing like um, all types of private parties. So uh, I've been working in the industry for now for around 12 years and both uh, competing and uh, working in restaurants. And uh, yeah, so... Thank you. Welcome. We're, we're very happy to have you. We were commenting on the beautiful kitchen yesterday when we had our little tech check. We were commenting on the beautiful kitchen that you're stationed in today. And whether you believe it or not, because I didn't at first, uh, Arnie, our other guest, they're in the same room, just on different sides of the same room. So welcome, Arnie. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for having us. So, um, yeah, in terms of our introduction, <clears throat> I'm just an old old fish guy. I've been uh, in this uh, aquaculture business now for uh, over 20 years. Started uh, with uh, being in Japan for for a long time, doing a lot of tuna and salmon. But then uh, I, about <clears throat> 10 years ago, I got very much involved with uh, this uh, incredibly exciting fish called the Arctic char. I've been doing that uh, for now almost a decade. So so really happy to tell you more about it today. Wonderful. I think it's really cool that we have two sides of the Arctic char story today um, by each of you with Chef Henrik and his preparing of the Arctic char and with Arnie from Matorka, a CCO of Aquaculture, um, talking to us about how the Arctic char is brought to our table, how it's made, how it's grown, how it's farmed. And so I think that uh, to kick things off, it would be cool to watch the video that Arnie has provided a little bit more about Matorka and aquaculture. Are you okay if we jump into that, Arnie? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a great beginning. And do you have anything you wanted to sort of preface and start off with before we introduce the video? Anything to say about it? Well, maybe just, you know, this is obviously just a very brief sort of introduction about uh, where we do, uh, grow the Arctic char and, and what sort of a location it is and what it looks like, the farm, etc. So it's, it's uh, sort of uh, packing a, a lot of information and, and uh, lo a lot of things into uh, three minutes. So, so pay good attention. 
Well, pay good attention, and I bet you will have some great follow-up questions for both of you. So here we go. We are now at uh, Matorka Arctic Char Farm in Iceland. This is where we have been uh, farming uh, Arctic Char now since uh, 2017. And it's been a great project. It was all engineered in order to basically farm uh, the perfect fish in a very sustainable and environmentally friendly manner. And that is indeed the reason for the location, because we are standing in a volcanic lava field. So all of this here is basically a lava rock. And this rock is very porous. And this essentially is the filter for the aquaculture station behind me. So all the water, all the precipitation, the snow and the rain basically goes into the uh, lava rock where it gets filtered slowly but surely. And on its way to the sea, we then drill wells and extract the water for the farm once it has been filtered by this process of, of precipitation and, and flowing through the lava. Matorka is located here on the southwest corner of this volcanic island in the North Atlantic. It all starts with hatching tiny little arctic jar eggs in Icelandic freshwater. Once the juveniles reach 10 grams, they get transported onto our grow site here in Grindavik. While the fish is still small, it spends all its time in indoor tanks and doesn't come outside until it is about 200 grams. The water from the volcanic lava is funneled into the production tanks. The farm is completely run on geothermal energy and is very energy efficient, whereas the water is led through the farm by gravity. So these are the wells that we are using to extract the water from the, uh, from the lava. So they're basically about 20 meters deep. And like I said earlier, this is basically what captures the water before it flows into the Atlantic. The farm is located on the magnificent Reykjanes Peninsula, which sits in the North Atlantic up by the Arctic Circle. It is in this environment where you find the Arctic char's natural habitat, and therefore the perfect water for Arctic char farming. The farming tanks actually have a heavy current in order to give the fish a natural environment and to give them plenty of exercise. The fish is fed a premium diet of non-GMO ingredients and we are proud that no fish is caught to feed our arctic char. This is because all marine ingredients are from Icelandic fishing industry offcuts. Once the fish is about 1.5 kilograms, we harvest it and bring it to our adjacent processing facility. The fish is all processed and packed prior to rigor mortis which ensures optimal flesh quality and best culinary experience. As a result of this quick harvesting and packaging process, the fish is arriving in export markets the same day as it was harvested. This is further helped by the fact that our farm is only 20 kilometers from Iceland's main international airport. We are proud to be ASC certified, as well as being rated as best choice by the Seafood Watch. Matorka aims to provide seafood connoisseurs the world's best Arctic char from the world's most magical place. The world's most magical place. Oh, there you I have love it. how that finished. <laughs> now I'm dying to come to Iceland even more than I was before. Uh, what a great video. Thank you so much. I feel like I learned so much about Arctic char that I didn't know. Well, uh, glad, glad you like it. Yeah, and and you're quite good on camera there. So this is your nat this is your natural <laughs> habitat. Say, Arnie, you get into <laughs> you're that, used buddy. to being on camera, Arnie. You're a star. No, 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 not at yes. all. Yes. Yes. Anyway, great to be uh, with you guys. Yeah. Well, and you know, um, I I was wondering is I don't know this, and maybe it's a silly question to ask, but uh, is Iceland known? as like the primary source for arctic char in the world like is that its main um like fish export do you know yeah yeah well that's a, that's an excellent question because um the arctic char is is uh, you could say from from the, uh, figured out a little bit by the name that it's all around the arctic circle so you'll yes. have uh, pools of arctic char in in canada and and uh, russia and and scandinavia so it's, it's uh, all around these colder uh, regions of, of the Northern Hemisphere. 
So, uh, but it's but it's um, in terms of export volume. So the only only country that is really sort of uh, exporting, producing for export market is is Iceland. I think okay. uh, Canada has its own Arctic char farms uh, mm -hmm. and uh, has excellent excellent production. But uh, Iceland is is one of the well almost the only country that is really sort of uh, making a uh, exporting its Arctic char because we we are of course a small population uh, with heavy focus on on seafood. And we uh, feel that uh, the Arctic char has a lot more to offer than just being a, a local species. We want to really take it to the world. And Canada is indeed one of, one of our, our big markets because the, the Canadians, they, they know this species and, and uh, have, seem to have a, a appreciation of it. Yes, we're familiar with it. We like it. I, for <laughs> one, absolutely enjoy Arctic char whenever I'm able to uh, have it. Um, and you, you were talking about what you feed the Arctic char. There was a brief little shot of the of the food that you feed them. Can you just go in a little bit further? What exactly that is? Yes, I mean these are these are sort of uh, typical uh, aquaculture pellets that uh, the the most of aquaculture industry is run on. However, uh, the Arctic char here in Iceland is is fed uh, a non GMO diet and also all the uh, all the fish meal and fish oils in the fish are actually from uh, the local industry. So we're very right. proud that no fish is actually caught to produce the feed. So sometimes yes. you are uh, catching fish to feed fish. Uh, that right. is not the case here. So that is also a, one of the things we're incredibly proud of to proud be able of. to offer that. As you should. And then also in that video, it just saying that you can harvest and ship in the same short turnaround time yeah. is incredible. Cool. All yeah. of that would be music to <laughs> a chef's ears. Oh, Am I right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Henrik, for Henrik, it's local yeah. anyways, but for those who aren't getting their Arctic chart locally, that would be such a wonderful thing to hear that your, your food is coming so as fresh as possible. Just like that fish on the cutting board in front of you there. <laughs> yeah. This one came today. Of course, it came yes. without me, and this is definitely a big, uh, a big factor in our uh, community that we need our uh, produce to come as soon as possible. Because, like we know, it's, it has a, a short time, mm -hmm. and uh, so you want you want it as fresh as possible. And mm -hmm. uh, we are really happy here in Iceland that uh, our fish is uh, we are able to get it quickly, and and because it's small, so it's uh, you. But you can get around the, around the country pretty quickly, and uh, this is something that we are really proud of. I would love to know one of your favorite ways to prepare Arctic char, <clears throat> Chef Henrik. Do you have yeah. a way that you love to serve it that you're currently serving in, in your store or in your, on your menu restaurant? I mean, it depends, you know. It, it depends on, like, if you go to a restaurant in Iceland, you'll probably see an Arctic char on every single menu. And... Uh, it's it's usually it's uh, it's uh, cured, uh, maybe smoked and then lightly uh, cooked. You cook it on low degrees because it uh, doesn't need a lot of heat to be to be uh, perfectly cooked. Uh, I cook it myself on like 38 degrees if I want it to be just perfectly flaky and uh, and cooked through. But I mean, at my home I cook it with feta cheese and with lemon and. Uh, Capers, you know, this classical way of cooking uh, fish. Uh, you can grill it as well. It's, uh, it's fatty, so it doesn't uh, stick to the grill. Uh, it's, it's very, it's a very uh, common in Iceland to, to cure it and smoke it and uh, eat it raw. Okay. And, and that's very good, like we, similar to, like we do to the salmon, but... Yes. Uh, the Arctic char is even more delicate. It has even more delicate flavors, and it's it's not as fatty as the as the salmon. So uh, it definitely it's I mean it's a great product, and there's a reason why almost every uh, restaurant in Iceland is using this product, and probably every home as well eats it at least once a week. I would think. Wow. Um, okay, well, we're just going to take a quick little break and go to a commercial and then we'll come back and ask a couple more questions uh, before we wrap this episode. But so far, I'm just blown away.
So we'll see you in just a minute. Been through a whole lot, but we overcome Enemies in our face, but we ain't gon' run Never drift off course, always stay on mission Won't slow us down, cause we way too driven Yeah, we put in these 10,000 hours You won't stop us, cause we got the power Whole world is watching, and I hope they ready From here on out, we a legendary We ain't going nowhere Okay, we're back. Amazing. Um, something I wanted to just briefly touch on uh, before we wrap up this episode is that um, something we spoke on our last episode um, for, with the chef from Denmark was just about the Nordic Manifesto and the focus kind of on sustainability, environmental um, consciousness when it comes to food. And so, uh, Arnie, this will probably be a question for you, but is Arctic char farming sustainable and environmentally friendly? If you can expand on, on how yeah, you guys yes. deal with that. No, that's a great, great uh, question and, and a big theme here in, in the Nordic countries, obviously, and, and all over the world is trying to uh, make uh, everyone's production as sustainable as possible. And, and the Arctic char is a great example of this. Uh, we farm the fish on land, as you saw, the tanks, everything is on land. And this is all basically to, to protect the marine environment. So, um, and in addition to that, the whole farm is run on geothermal energy. So the carbon footprint of the, of the, uh, of the operation is, is minuscule. And, uh, on top of that, uh, the, the carbon footprint that we are generating, we're trying to offset that with uh, tree planting as much as po possible, because that's one of the things we need here in Iceland is, is more trees. So, uh, yes, the Arctic char is very much a, a, an excellent example of, of a sustainable, environmentally friendly uh, production. And even the water that we're using is naturally filtered. So there is no need, need to, to filter the water in any way. The uh, Mother Nature takes care of that for us. So I can affirmatively answer yes. <laughs> well, that was a great explanation, and uh, no wonder our contact from the uh, Embassy of Iceland in Ottawa, Per Unheim, mm -hmm. who is on our launch uh, <laughs> episode talking about this partnership going forward with the Nordic countries. Obviously, no wonder he's connected us with you, because all of the things that we talked about on our last episode about um, keeping things local, keeping things sustainable and environmentally friendly, this fits in perfectly with all of that. So I would love to hear from uh, Chef Henrik as well about mm -hmm. what all of that means to you, like, or how are you working in the sustainable measures uh, in your businesses and in your, your work as a chef? Uh, so for me, like when I've been working since uh, I was a small kid in Iceland, it's, this has been growing now growing growing it's uh 15 years ago nordic cuisine was uh was not really founded in iceland you know you would not like not go to a restaurant and see nordic cuisine uh about 10 years ago they started to take a, a big fly in iceland so uh and and nowadays we're really uh, focused on sustainability on uh, local products on using uh icelandic products in our cuisine of course we're uh, limited for some uh, some reasons it's not you know Iceland does not uh, make all the products we'll need to to uh, to make a whole dinner mm -hmm. so it's it's hard for a restaurant to be only Icelandic only Nordic but there are a few that that do it but I mean a product like the Arctic char that is uh, grown in this environment is uh, sustainability and uh, it really it really shows what we want to do in Iceland and uh, the products we want to have. And also it, uh, it, it comes back in the product. I mean, this is a, if I show you, show you the Please. fish. Please, yes, we'd love to see it. This is a, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of uh, Arctic char, uh, like you can see. And, uh, and I think that's, that's also a big factor, you know, in, uh, in manufacturing uh, of products. It's uh, like for me as a chef, I, I mostly, you know, I want to go off the quality and uh, to say that I would say this is the one of the biggest qualities of uh, Arctic char you will find and uh, I've been cooking uh, around the world so uh, so yeah I'm really happy with it 
That's great. I, I was reading online a little bit about um, what you mentioned, the taste of Iceland that you came to Toronto to participate yeah. in. When was that? Because I couldn't see the date. Was it pre-pandemic? So, uh, no. We, I, I, was there, uh, I was there last year. It was probably okay. in uh, September. Right. Something okay. Like I saw yeah. the date of September, but I didn't know if it was an event that had already happened or if it was one that was coming like in September of 2023. And and when you did come, just out of interest, did you prepare anything uh, Arctic char related when you did the Taste of Iceland? Yeah, we did an uh, Arctic char uh, plate. And uh, it's, I mean, our what the products that we are uh, mostly uh, proud of in Iceland is, is definitely our fish, our Arctic char, uh, our lamp. Uh, and our uh, rest of our seafood. But uh, this is something that uh, we always like to bring for the table when we go for this uh, Taste of Iceland. Um, because also uh, when we take it and, and we show all the chefs and we show the, the uh, culinary community in the other countries that they're really, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're a big fan of it. They're a big fan of this product. So, Wonderful. Well, when I hope when we have some of uh, the Nordic country representatives coming to our conference that's happening in Niagara Falls in June, I'm sure Arctic Char will be on the menu because it seems to be a perfect, in perfect alignment with the Nordic Manifesto and the sustainability focus of the Nordic countries. So thank you both so much for being here today and for educating us. Um, thank you to Per Anheim from the Embassy of Iceland in Ottawa for connecting us and and creating this relationship. I look forward to following you guys online and everything that you do, Arctic Char and otherwise. And of course, I always like to say a huge thank you to Cisco for hosting us on Cisco's Virtual Kitchen. We will be having four more episodes in this mini series of the Nordic Features. So stay tuned for March's episode information which will be on all of our channels we are also going to highlight um, our special guests today in our description so that you can follow them on social media and keep up to what they're doing at Matorka and at uh, chef heinrich's restaurants and uh, that's probably all we have for today if you guys want to say a quick <laughs> last farewell as we wrap things up well just uh, again Thank you. Thank you for having us. And, and I, I hope that the Canadians will have lots of uh, excellent Arctic char in its future. If I have anything I thank to you do again with it, for, they will. Uh, <laughs> uh, for having us on the show. It's great to meet you. And I uh, hope one day I'll, I'll meet you in, uh, in Canada. That would be wonderful. Or we'll come to meet you in Iceland. I think me and Jay That's are going to be planning Even trip. better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Thank, thank you. you.